The next morning, Mike took us to breakfast at, appropriately, the Long Border Cafe, a few blocks off the beach in Oceanside. Skipper was a bit indecisive on what to order, so Mike and I gave him some advice. Yeah, if it was up to me, I'd go for the Phil Edwards Special. After a great breakfast, Mike took us to one of his favorite spots, Terramar, a few miles south in Carlsbad. There was a light chop on the water, but the high tide made for some good workable lefts, and we had the whole place to ourselves, unusual for any spot in Southern California. Mike Martin on his ultralight epoxy shortboard. After Mike saw how much fun Skipper was having on the longboard, he figured he ought to give it a try. Mike Martin powering left on my 9-3 Robert August Nose Rider. And finishing out the ride in style. on the longboard again. So much fun he couldn't contain himself. After a while, Skipper really got the place wired and started to dominate. He said it reminded him of some good high tide days in front of his house at 3rd Street in New Smyrna.
I caught the last wave in. Later, we all went to the Linden Surfboard Factory in Oceanside, where Mike was working as the sales manager. He gave us a tour of the facility, beginning with the front office. Too bad they don't have any decals on the window. Later, he showed us the computer-shaped foam blanks, which are becoming so important in the industry. Now, as is the case in most surfboard factories, you tend to see a lot of things of an artistic and cultural nature. Like this dead gerbil somebody fiberglassed to the wall. You know, that one actually won an award from the National Endowment for the Arts. We moved back into the shaping bay where the owner, master surfboard designer and shaper Gary Linden, was working on a balsa longboard. When finished, this beautiful handcrafted board will sell for over $1,000. The next morning, Mike and I got an early start for one of the classic Southern California surf spots, Swamis. Swamis is located adjacent to and derives its name from the Self-Realization Fellowship Retreat and Hermitage in Encinitas, a distinctive Southern California landmark for over 50 years. Mike and I were joined in the water by about 80 of our closest friends, but we still managed to catch a few waves. Here's Mike on a good left. Mike really throwing some spray on a cutback. The rights at Swamis are great for longboards. Just as we were leaving the water, we got a chance to watch one of the greatest longboard surfers of all time, Dale Dobson, in action. At age 46, Dale Dobson is still one of the top-ranked longboard surfers in the world, as you can see on this way. He cranks a big bottom turn. Powers through the white water. Into a big roundhouse cutback. Banks off the white water back the other way. Off the lip. Goes to the nose. Goes high in the wave to break the fin loose. And brings the board around. Now most surfers would find this to be a rather precarious position, but not Dale Dobson. He stays on the nose, brings it all the way around, and drops back in, still hanging five. Mr. Dale Dobson, a true longboard master. Yeah, actually, I taught him everything he knows. The gardens at the Self-Realization Fellowship are open to the public and Mike and I decided to check it out.
The Self-Realization Fellowship was founded in 1937 by Paramahansa Yogananda, a world-renowned teacher who brought India's ancient science of meditation to the West in 1920. Yogananda, perhaps best known for his book, The Autobiography of a Yogi, dedicated his life to uniting East and West in the lasting ties of spiritual understanding. The gardens provide a panoramic view of the Pacific Ocean and the adjacent surf spot. Each year, the quiet serenity of these beautiful and tranquil gardens attract visitors from all over the world. <laughs> 